Hi everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to explore how to graph different types of functions on our Casio GDC or Casio FX CG50 in particular. So, before we start with any function, I want you to focus on the settings of graph. So, let me walk you through on certain settings which you should make sure that they are completely on. So if you see your GDC, turn it on and go to graph option. The very first setting which you should make sure that it is correct is on the F3 button. If you see right now, my functions are XT1, YT1. If any time this happens to you, make sure you click on type. So click on F3 and come back to Y because that's where you are going to deal with. So it has to be like y1, y2, y3, etc. And if you have other functions entered, delete them first. Second, uh, your window settings. So, but window settings we can explore when you have a graph. After that, if you think there are certain settings which are not on, so you can always click on shift and setup. So click shift and setup. And if you see, there are options for you. Input is math, draw type connect, which is good, graph function on, dual screen no, derivatives off, background none. And if you keep going, angle you might need to change into degree or radian depending on the question. And next, if you go coordinates, it has to be on. Second, grid. You maybe turn it on or just keep it online, whichever, both ways it works. Axis, you can click on scale or on and label, which is on. Display should be just normal. Yeah, so these are basic settings. So now, once I have checked these settings, I'm going to click exit and returning on my graph screen. Or you can go back to main menu and then go to graph. So first thing, you should see y1, y2, y3, etc. Now I'm going to enter my function. I have another function which is uh, of the height of a rocket launched from a 10 meter platform and aiming to exceed 100 meters. And the function is given by a quadratic. So let's enter this function and see what happens. So I'm going to delete this and enter this function 10 plus 28 x and minus 2 x square right so once it is done click enter draw okay i can see my graph is going up but i'm not able to see the further end of the top part of my function again come back to the question read it when you read it, you will understand what are the real settings you should change. So if I read the height in meters launched from a 10 meter platform, we are aiming to exceed 100 meters using this function. So which means this function can give us approximately 100 meters of height, right? And which my height is at least at 15 right now. So I'm going to go and change these settings so click on f3 you can click on standard if you want first and at least you will you will see something maybe on the x-axis oh no you cannot go back and change so i'm changing my x maxima because i could not see let me show you one one more time i can see my parabola is going up but it's not turning back until nine seconds of time right so which means it has to be l l more than 9 or 10. So I'm going to enter 20 here and come to y values. So as I told you, it the, the aim of this function is to reach 100 meters. So let's enter something around 100. So I'm going to enter 120, right? And see if I can see my graph, uh, the real parabola. Oh yeah, look. So it is a nice parabola. We can see x intercepts maxima as well and y intercept. So little bit settings you can change it from here. But if you don't want, you can go back and change 
your y minima as well. So let's say let's keep y minima as minus 20 and y maxima as 150 right and here you go. So now this is the perfect setting for our function we can see everything we can see the uh, the left side of the function right hand side the maxima as well and now how to analyze this so click on gsolve root so when you click on the root you will see where the function is intersecting x-axis so that's the first value negative 0 0.344 now if you read using the provided model determine the maximum height we can do that but if you sometimes there are questions in this context what is the domain of the function so remember the the rocket was launched at time with when it was zero right so do not read any x intercept which is less than zero so this doesn't make sense for us right but when you go to the next intercept you will see this is the time 14.348 when the rocket will come back to the ground level so that is the ground level zero zero is the ground level until unless it is mentioned otherwise right and so for the, this function my domain would be from zero to 14.3468 you can round depending on the question if it is three significant figure just round it for 14.34 or just three right next part you can find out the maxima click again uh, g solve click on maxima so the maximum height achieved by this function is 108 at 7 7 seconds or 7 minutes depending on your question right so using the provided model determine the maximum height of the rocket attained so that is 108 meters find the time in seconds when the rocket will land on the ground so uh, in that case you have to find out the x intercept which means roots and go to the second route so remember to navigate the routes between these two arrow buttons that's it second part sorry third part write the set of values of x where the height is more than 90 meters so which means there are certain values where your rocket is more than 90 meters so for that what you can do uh, there are two ways of dealing with this first option click exit and enter 90 meters here because original y1 is also representing the height but it is a variable height now i have a constant height which is 90 so i can enter 90 here that is one option for you so that is the best option as well so if you see look you can see now two lines the red line representing the height is 90 meters so if they are asking write the set of values which means it is actually going to intersect so click on g solve and g uh, f5 again so you see at 4 it is 90 and next time it will be 90 again at 10 so between 4 and 10 right seconds or minutes depending on this question uh, the height of the rocket was between uh, no height is more than 90 between x equals to 4 to 10 so that's how you can write your answers and that's how you can deal with this function so that was a one option but let me just delete this if you really want to understand the another method as well what you can do go to g solve and if you see root maxima minima intersect go further there is one option for you y calculate or x calculate so i want to know where my function is at the height of 90 right so i'm looking for x so click on x calculate and enter the y values as 90 so it will show you one option here and then you can actually see the other one as well because you know it will not just cross at once because it is a parable it is a symmetrical shape so it will do the double values so that's how you can deal with this function so just try and let me know if you have any, any questions so let me show you one more very quickly okay 
So here I have a velocity function of a moving particle given by 2 sine 0.5t plus 0.3t minus 2 from 0 to 10, right? So let's go back and erase whatever you have. So delete it and pause this video and enter this function. Okay, here you go. I have entered my function and I can click on draw and I can see this is just a straight line. So I hope that's not a good graph for us. So what I can do, whenever you encounter with any trig function, sine, cosine or just a mix of trig and polynomial, make sure if in trig function the degree symbol is missing, which means it has to be on radian settings. So I'm going to check my calculator. If you read, it's called degree here, which means I should change into radians. Now how to do that? While on the graph screen, what you have to do, just click on shift and this menu button. Come back, you will see there is an option for you to change the angle as degree to radian. So I'm going to change into radian, exit, draw. Okay, it's a little bit better, but why I'm not able to see the variation in my sine graph? Because from my previous question, I changed the height from negative 40 to 112. So I want to make it back to those original values. So click on F3 and click on standard first of all. You can click on standard all the time. That will make your function back to negative 10 to 10. But we don't need less than zero. So you can enter zero here and see how your function looks like now. Okay, I can see now, but if I change my height, that would be better. So I'm gonna go F3 and change my Y values as well. So I don't need to see from minus 10. So I will need minus five and five. If you remember, every trig function has, a, has its amplitude from minus one to one, but as it was multiplied by two, so I'm gonna cover minimum to five to five. So you could also try with minus three and three. Let's see now. Yeah, it's much better. If you want, you could definitely take negative three to negative or positive three. Yes, it's done, yeah, much better. Now you can see how you have to learn to adjust the window settings. That is the primary job for you. Now, once your graph is visible, I'm sure you can play with G-Solve and analyze this function. For example, use GDC, plot this graph, so you can copy this. When you copy, make sure you copy few values, which are, First is the y-intercept, which is 0, comma minus 2, right? And then more settings are on the roots. So if you click on roots, these should be also correctly labeled. So it's uh, 1.68 and then 6.11, right? And look for the maxima values as well. So maxima. And then you could also see the minima. So when you find out these values, the maxima, minima, this will give you an idea to copy and then copy this whole graph. And there are there could be more questions like this. For example, find the smallest value of t when the particle changes direction. So it is actually a velocity function, right? So velocity function, so positive velocity or negative velocity, that's where the particle is changing the direction. So if you see on the roots, right? So below or less than 1.68, my graph is below the x-axis, which means my velocity was negative. And after this point, my velocity was positive. So that is the first point where 
particle is changing its direction so wait for another video i'm going to actually record another one for the kinematics problems and then you can actually understand this problem very well thank you so much try these questions